So how are you feeling? Pretty sad to be honest. Um, this sauna has taken me four weeks to build and the worst thing imaginable has happened to it. Recently, I spent £10,000 on this home sauna and once the excitement wore off, I realised I was thousands of pounds in the mud. But I'm about to get all of that money back. But Jay, how? By building my own out of free wooden pallets I found on the Facebook marketplace. I'm attempting to build a fully functioning sauna on a £500 budget. And I'm doing this to prove to myself and all of you watching that looking after your health doesn't always have to come at a heavy cost. But to make sure I don't exceed this budget, I've agreed with my friend Jack that if I spend more than £500, he'll come and rip the whole project down in the middle of the night, meaning all of my hard work will have gone to waste. But before I even start building this thing, I need to figure out three major things. Whether this is even possible on a £500 budget, and if so, where to find all the building materials. How to actually structure this sauna in a way that it won't collapse and it'll continue to function over the next few years. And finally, how I'm going to heat this thing. So I started by designing what I wanted this thing to look like. Like. To do this, I generated a few ideas with AI before making a 3D model to get the size and scale I needed for the build. This gave me a rough idea of how many wooden pallets I was going to need and just how long this was going to take. Speaking of pallets, step two was to go out and collect some free pallets. Jack has found some for free on the Facebook marketplace, so I'm guessing these are the first ones that we're collecting, but it's still not enough. The majority of the day is going to be spent literally driving around, stopping outside of shops, warehouses, trading the state, seeing if there's any pallets that anyone one is flogging. Over the course of the day, we managed to secure ourselves 25 wooden pallets, which sounds like a lot, but according to the 3D model I did earlier, that's only enough for the floor and the walls, not the roof but we'll deal with that problem a little later. The next job was figuring out exactly where the sauna was gonna live in my garden. And this is where we ran into our first major problem. Over the years of making YouTube videos, my garden has become a bit of a mess. It's been neglected and it's become overgrown and filled with years and years worth of moldy scrap and leftover boxes. And it almost put an end to this entire project before it even started. But one night when I was feeling a little down about the situation, I started to scroll through some of my old photos and it reminded me exactly why I'm doing this the first place. Growing up, my health was never really a priority. I never exercised, I ate fast food all the time, and the benefits of things like ice baths and saunas were completely foreign to me. And that carried into my adult life, which led to me feeling really unhappy with the way I looked and the way I felt on a daily basis. But then, I discovered boxing. <laughs> I began exercising every day and turned my life around. But using a sauna every day was a major key to helping me get into the shape that I wanted. But I spent thousands on sauna sessions and I wanna to prove to you all that you can experience the same health benefits for a fraction of the cost. So, with my newfound motivation for this project, I got myself back to work. I'd say that trailer's been there for like three years and the wheels are completely stuck and there's only one way to get it out. Here we go. Let's go! Look how wedged that was! We should be good to start leveling our ground in step two, which is to completely level this floor. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm changing my occupation, you know. I'm gonna be a fing road digger. You see how many likes Jack just got this video with that sledgehammer? I want you to hit that like button harder than he just sledgehammered it, right? <laughs> I hit the edge of it. <laughs> so this isn't in the budget of the sauna. Okay, I'd just like to put that out there. You don't need to go smashing up GoPro. After the concrete was bagged up and ready to go, I was left with one large rectangular shaped problem in my building area where the concrete originally was. I decided there were two possible options here. I could either raise the ground and level out the hole, which would cost me the price of a few bags of dirt, or I could lower the ground around the hole and save some money to fit nicely within the budget. So we grabbed our shovels and got to work. And finally, after two days of just preparing the ground, I was left with this. It's time to start building the foundations to our sauna. Ugh. 
but it can't look like this. As you can see, the ground is still nowhere near level. And if we can't fix this, our sauna won't be structurally sound, which could lead to major problems in the future. So the first job was to grab spray paint and mark out the area I want the sauna to be in. This way, I'll know where to place my breeze blocks to build the solid foundation. For the breeze blocks, I found a bunch of them on Facebook for one pound each. This brings our total budget so far to just 12 pounds. So the idea is we need to put breeze blocks on the base of the sauna to help keep a solid foundation. But this floor is super uneven, so we might have to do some digging to maybe sink some of the breeze blocks or maybe raise some of them, depending on how uneven the floor is. We're gonna get the breeze blocks on the floor now, and we're gonna see where we're at in terms of level. Another three hours of digging holes and flattening sand later, we're finally ready to get our floor laid down. So now we have all 30 of our wooden pallets for free, by the way. It's now time to start building the floor to our sauna. We've nearly finished building the walls to the sauna. There's two more pallets to put on now, which is gonna make the sauna whole, basically. The only thing that I'm kind of worried about is the roof and the door. The door is gonna need to be completely level so it actually opens on hinges properly. And the roof is gonna have to be slanted slightly so water drips off it and falls off the back of it. I'll be completely honest with you. I completely underestimated how hard this was actually going to be. We're on like day eight right now of trying to build this thing. And it does kind of feel like I'm nowhere near finished and it's very demotivating. The weather's been terrible and it's getting to a point now where I'm considering if this was even worth it. But there's one thing that's keeping me going and that is this. This entire project is a warm up phase for something even bigger. And I'll tell you about it in just a second. But before I get into that, I've got to crack on with the rest of today's building process. I've got to cut down support beams to the floor and slot those into place. Then we have to cut the wall insulation to size and slot those inside the walls like a big game of Tetris. And after that, we need to insulate the floor to make sure it's 100% heat resistant. This is the most important part of this entire project because without insulation, this thing is going to lose heat and it's not going to be a sauna. Do you reckon anyone has ever used marshmallows as insulation to a house? Might actually be a little experiment I might do for a short, you know. And once that's all done and out the way, I then need to offload some fresh pallets and draw them together to make the roof panels. Right, so we're at the stage now where we've got to get the roof on. A little bit of a problem. We've had to screw pallets together, but that's not enough to support the weight of, let's say it rains one day, the weight of the water on the roof. Probably going to push it through. So we're going to have to create a little support beam that runs through the middle of the ceiling that supports the pallets, basically. It should give us a rock solid ceiling. So out of pallets, we've made this thing actually feel indestructible. If you could see the spirit level right now, guys, we've actually nailed it, no pun intended. Didn't even use the nail gun, you know what the fuck. Should we do like a, a burn test at the end where like we just throw molotovs at it? Um, this was a joke, but I feel like I just manifested something huge by saying this. Just wait till you see the end of this video. You'll see exactly what I mean. I'm an idiot, man. Day 12 was probably the most testing day so far. The weather was relentless, and because we were working on the roof, there was nowhere to hide. It was super demotivating. But then I remembered something. Remember earlier when I said this? This entire project is a warm-up phase for something even bigger. Well... We're currently 28,937 subscribers away from hitting 2 million subs. And when we hit 2 million, I'll build a fully functioning log cabin in the middle of the woods, just like this one, and I'll live in it for 10 days straight. And for every 1,000 subscribers that this video gets, I'll invite one of you to join me in the log cabin for a massive party for that video. So if this video gets 32,000 subscribers, that means 32 of you will be invited to be part of my next video. We're covering the entire roof of the sauna with this, basically, shed roofing, essentially. It's finally starting to look like something there, like with all the insulation, the roofing on, and the cladding on the roof. This is, honestly, it's starting to look like what it can finally be. By day 13, we started to work on the inside and we spent a few hours framing out the two layers of bench seating. And speaking of MDF, this was one of only a few times that we used wood that wasn't scrap. We actually got it from B&Q along with the timber that we used for the seating. These are £3.47, which is perfect. So I'm gonna need a load of these to basically support the seating area in the sauna. Don't worry though, I've been keeping track of the cost of this whole build along the way and I'll reveal the full cost breakdown at the end of this video and trust me you'll be shocked at just how cheap this actually was bro that's rock solid yeah. i feel like we've overdone it yeah 
you can easily see like five, six people along here, no problem. So this is the higher layer of seating. The next step is to do the lower layer of seating. That is the foundations to the lower level of seating complete. It actually looks like the sauna. Like I said earlier, we've got two levels to it. So this is like the moderate heat level, the one that Jack sat on. And I'm sat on the extreme heat version of the sauna. We worked into the night, panelling the floor, the walls, the seats and the ceiling. And this is what we're left with. Would you believe me if I told you that even inside of this sauna is almost entirely made from recycled pallet wood? To decorate the inside of this thing, we actually took apart wooden pallets, one plank at a time. And just to prove that this thing is made entirely from pallets, look at all these little stamps from the companies that used them previously. But two questions still remain. How much did it cost and does it actually work? Well, this process was a lot cheaper than you'd think and it cost a grand total of Four hundred and ninety-two pound and twenty-four pence. I'm I'm not even kidding. It actually costs less than five hundred pounds to build a sauna in my back garden. Which proves, with enough time and persistence, you could build this exact sauna. We got a sauna for cheap and what you can see right now <laughs> is, is the outcome of doing it the cheap way. It was not worth it. I do not advise anybody do this. I'll see you in the next video with something a lot more safe. On prelins, on prelins, on prelins, I saw, but my run through the money, the pressure be calling. Left on my blessings, I feel like I'm falling. The birdie is back. Tell me I'm garbage, I'm going through something, that's why I ain't calling. Going in progression, it's all that I wanted. To